Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. Um, as usual, a couple of announcements first. If you live within driving distance of Columbus, Ohio, you want to spend Saturday, April 23rd with us. We're going to do our annual Women's Health Symposium here at our center in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we'll do the same thing we did last year. It worked out so well. We have education and cooking and eating from 10 to 3. And then at 3 o'clock, we stop all that, have appetizers, get a little spa treatments, hang out and talk. And um, if you are a member of Operation Healthy Girlfriend or you want to become a member, um, Dr. Lana Contos is one of our guest pre presenters along with Mary Beth Cowens. Um, Mary Beth is a graduate of the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course. And uh, Dr. Contos will spend some time with the existing already enrolled Healthy Girlfriends and the chapter leaders and also those who are interested. So come spend the day with us. You will be really glad you did. And I mentioned the Diet and Lifestyle course. We offer this in the summertime through our school. Um, we use the celebrity instructors in the summertime, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Schultz. Um, so we've got quite a lineup and you, these are live and interactive teleconference calls, not just web-based learning, detailed slides, lots of materials. If you are in the healthcare field or you want to be, you got to take this course and we have some special offers for people who do this course. So anyway, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and we can chat. All right, a couple of talks, uh, things I want to talk about today. Well, mostly sun. I'm going to talk about sun and sunscreen and sun avoidance. And the reason this is a good time to talk about it is that it's springtime. And I have already, even though the sun is not out yet in much of the northern part of the United States where I live, uh, people are already starting to ask regularly about sun exposure, sunscreens, and all kinds of related questions. Now, I'll start by saying there are some points about which all of us agree. Um, sun exposure leading to burned skin is dangerous, not a good idea, but there remains a great deal of disagreement among healthcare professionals about the safety of spending any time at all in the sun and the consequences also of completely avoiding it. Now, humans produce vitamin D in response to sun exposure. It's not found in foods and therefore we can conclude that humans need sunlight. The sun has actually contributed to our survival. Remember that back when we were hunter-gatherers and cave dwellers, there weren't any vitamin D pills or fortified foods, so humans just had to spend time in the sun. And we relied on that to produce vitamin D, which by the way is actually a hormone but was misclassified as a vitamin. I think that's one of the things that has caused so much confusion. Now, I've written a lot on the topic of sunlight and vitamin D and the relationship and all that. I'm not going to regurgitate all of that here. There are lots of articles posted in the Health Brace Library about that. But I'm going to add to the body of evidence suggesting that we humans really do need to get out in the sun. Researchers reported in a March 2016 article that women who avoid the sun have a shorter life expectancy than women who don't. And the effect was dose dependent. More sun exposure resulted in a lower risk of cardiovascular disease and non-cancer, non-CVD deaths, while lower sun exposure met, met um, a higher risk. In fact, the researchers say, and I thought this was fascinating, avoiding sun exposure resulted in the same risk for all cause deaths as smoking. And by the way, they said that sunshine even helps the smokers. 60 year old smokers who spend the most time in the sun have a life expectancy two years longer than smokers who avoid sunlight. This indicates that avoiding the sun is, quote, this is from the researchers, a risk factor for death of similar magnitude as smoking, the authors wrote. The study included over 29,000 Swedish women who were followed for 20 years. One of the differences between this study and many others uh, like it is that the analysis was dose dependent in terms of relationship with sun. Other studies have compared people with the upper extremes of sun exposure with people who completely avoid it. This one looked at all of the in-betweens. The researchers, however, do acknowledge some limitations, which include that the study was observational and it really wasn't designed to pick up cause and effect relationships, although um, they hypothesize about some things and cite some studies giving a good indication of what their thoughts are. Um, another thing that they mentioned is that one of the factors that confounds relationships on sun with um, uh, relationship factors with sunshine is that people who get sun exposure often engage in a lot of other healthier habits too. So it's very difficult to study this. Well, 
Anyway, the researchers offered a lot of explanations as to why there's a relationship between higher sun exposure and lower risk of mortality. They referenced several studies showing that there's an inverse relationship between, for example, vitamin D levels and type 2 diabetes and differences uh, uh, in A1C levels depending upon the season. Studies show that living closer to the equator, uh, people have a lower risk of type 1 diabetes. Cardiovascular disease, also sun and season dependent. People who spend more time in the sun have a lower incidence of thromboembolism and also a lower risk of developing high blood pressure. Winter, on the other hand, is associated with the increased risk of heart disease, stroke, and arterial and venous thromboembolism. An evaluation of the effects of sun exposure on patients with skin cancer showed some really fascinating results. Um, the risk of all-cause mortality increased fourfold in subjects who had non-melanoma skin cancer and multiple myeloma as a result of avoiding sun exposure when compared to the group that had the highest amount of sun exposure. The researchers cited studies showing that um, the reporting increased survival rates for skin cancer patients who spent time in the sun. The group concluded that sun exposure may indeed increase the risk of skin cancer, but it doesn't decrease life expectancy. Furthermore, they said this, we did find an increased risk of skin cancer. However, the skin cancers that occurred in those exposing themselves to the sun had better prognosis, which I thought was interesting. The group offered several suggestions as to how this information should be interpreted to um, action plans for the public. First, they said, advice about sun exposure and restriction should vary by geographic area. In northern latitudes where the UV index is low, less restriction might be a much better idea, for example. They note that research um, shows that using sunscreen doesn't make it safer to be exposed to the sun for longer periods of time. I've been saying this for years. They challenge the advice that essentially gives people permission to spend an almost unlimited amount of time in the sun as long as they slather their bodies with sunscreen. They note that the rising skin cancer rate in Sweden has been a result of overexposure to sunlight since the Swedes have become quite dependent on, on uh, sunscreen, and that advising restriction of sun exposure through the use of sunscreen may be responsible for the increased incidence of cardiovascular deaths and non-cancer, non-cardiovascular morbidity and death in Sweden. Dr. Lindquist said this about sunscreen, if you're using it to be out uh, longer in the sun, you're using it in the wrong manner. However, he said, if you're stuck on a boat and you have to be out, it's probably better to have sunscreen than not to have it. Well, this and other studies have led many professionals to recommend vitamin D supplements. In other words, if being out in the sun allows you to produce vitamin D, and then um, perhaps some people are not getting out in the sun or using sunscreen, perhaps vitamin D supplements are a good idea. But this research group cautioned against interpreting their study to mean that differences in outcomes based on sun exposure were related solely to vitamin D. They say that vitamin D may just be a marker for sun exposure and the benefits of sun have more to do with other mechanisms related to UV radiation. In other words, they're cautioning against this reductionist idea that sun exposure is all boiled down to one thing, vitamin D. You can take it in pills, then you don't need to be out in the sun anymore. Uh, life actually is just a little bit more complicated than that. In fact, observational studies show that people with many health conditions have lower vitamin D levels, but intervention studies giving vitamin D supplements to people with these various conditions hasn't resulted in improvement. Researchers involved in these studies say that lower vitamin D levels are a result of disease, not the cause of it. And I think in view of the study that I'm talking about, this, this particular article, studies like the ones I just mentioned, um, it may be that there actually is an effect of sunshine that includes but is not limited to vitamin D production and its functions in the body. Dr. Lindquist told Medscape, we know in our population there are three big lifestyle factors that endanger health, smoking, being overweight, and inactivity. Now we know there's a fourth, avoiding sun exposure. Um, so very interesting article, and one of the reasons I liked it is it touched on so many of the things that I've been talking about for years and that come up as questions about the sun issue. Um, is it healthy to be out in the sun? Is it healthy to avoid the sun? What is the role of sunscreen and where does vitamin D fit in with all of this? And I think the bottom line is get out in the sun, don't burn your skin. And, um, uh, but uh, avoiding the sun is actually a health hazard. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.